The National Wildlife Federation, um, could you tell us a little bit about the organization and where wetlands protection fits within the mission of the organization? Um, well, historically, the National Wildlife Federation started in 1936. Um, one of the very first leaders was Dan Darling, who was, you know, a cartoonist, but actually um, a conservationist at heart, and with a particular interest in interest in waterfowl and water birds. And so, for example, he was instrumental in pushing for the development of the Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge down in Sanibel Island and was a, an initial leader in the organization. So the organization's interest in particularly waterfowl conservation, wetlands as, as duck and, and migratory bird habitat really goes back to its inception. Um, National Wildlife Federation was very active in the enactment of the, of the Clean Water Act, and then from the time of the enactment of the Clean Water Act, it was very central in the program to defend uh, wetlands, particularly the 404 dredge and fill program, defend that capability as a primary tool for protecting aquatic habitat um, in the U.S. I think the mission, you know, has the National Wildlife Federation, and rightfully so, has become very involved in climate change, both in mitigating climate change and adaptation to climate change. And that has, in a sense, those priorities have sort of, um, I guess, become, in a, in a sense, overshadowed the, the underlying basic commitment to wetlands conservation as habitat. Um, but at the same time, wetlands are now sort of re-emerging, particularly coastal wetlands, as so important for adaptation to the intense storm events as, as well as drought conditions. So I think it's an evolving role, but it's, it's, it has a long, we have a long history of, um, of commitment to, to protecting wetlands. And I would imagine there are a variety of different ways that the organization is involved in protecting wetlands. I would imagine um, that you're involved in legislative development, regulatory development, litigation. Um, is that correct? I mean, are there all those different areas that you work in here? And, and if possible, could you tell us a little bit about whether um, there are particular areas where the organization spends more time, or uh, is it pretty evenly divided among those areas? Yeah, I, I think that has changed, and it probably ebbs and flows, depending on a lot of circumstances. Um, when I first started with the National Wildlife Federation in 1987, I think litigation, and prior to that time, probably from the mid-70s through, I would say, maybe even as, uh, the mid-90s, litigation was a very important part of what we did um, in the National Advocacy Office here in D.C., but also um, we had people very involved, uh, particularly through legal clinics even, at some of the major law schools around the country. So in our regions, we had a strong litigation emphasis. I think that has ebbed uh, over time. Um, it, that is, litigation is not a primary focus of our attention and resources now. I think that could change. We never had uh, resources like paralegals, and I mean, it was it was never a, a terribly um, law firm type environment. We were always single lawyers working <laughs> at our old max, um, trying to trying to make a difference through litigation. Um, legislative lobbying is obviously a huge part of what we do in this office, and uh, but I think. What we're finding more and more is that both any litigation work and all our legislative work really has to be um, founded upon very strong in environmental education and advocacy at the field level. And that means um, basically unless we can have a bottoms up understanding and movement to support these, our conservation agenda and to have that reflected in the media and have it reflected in people's voting in Congress, we really don't have a chance of succeeding, either legislatively, in the agencies, or in court. 
you mentioned at the field level. So um, I presume then there's a, an organization of regional offices and state and local offices, and you work through them to try and get the word out? Right. Um, yes, I mean, NWF has a really interesting, uh, the federation structure, the federation in the name National Wildlife Federation reflects our, um, that we are an organization that is a federation of state affiliated organizations who are independent. They're their own 501c3 nonprofit organizations, but they are part of a federation and they create the policy on which the National Wildlife Federation staff act. Um, so we have that, those state affiliates in almost every state, and then we also have regional offices and that are National Wildlife Federation, and they include um, regional representatives who are liaisons with these state affiliates. That's our, that's our basic structure.